Hello everyone, my name is Veronica and I am a member of the Orfeo Music Festival team administering today's webinar. I am pleased to welcome you all to this session in the new Orfeo Spring, Fest uh, Spring 2022 webinar festival series dedicated to classical music performance. I believe we have a full and exciting program planned for today. I would now like to introduce Larissa Jackson, longtime music director of the Orfeo Music Festival, who has led the planning and development of the festival as well as the, our webinar program today. Larissa will manage our program and will be available to answer any questions during and after this webinar. Um, Larissa. Hi everyone and welcome. Um, let me say a few words about the festival and then we'll go on to our main program. Orfeo Music Festival is an international classical music event widely known for its artistic excellence. The festival takes place in Europe each summer and from the time of its founding in 2003, the festival's mission is to celebrate and promote artistic excellence with classical music performances of the highest standards and to offer superior education to the new generation of musicians with the world-class artists to nurture creativity and to build lasting human and artistic bonds. Great, and I would just like to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we will be posting the webinar series, including this webinar that you're seeing watching right now. And of course, please share it with anyone who might be interested. Um, we are opening a new webinar series, Music is Our World, which is a three-year initiative by the Orfeo Festival, exploring the role of music in our lives in a variety of ways, but concentrating on the art of musical performance, which lays at the corner of musical experience. And now I would like to uh, take a few more moments to introduce you to today's distinguished faculty artist, Natsuki Fukasawa. Steinway artist uh, Natsuki Fukasawa's music career has taken her through United States cities, as well as to Europe, Scandinavia, Israel, Australia, Brazil, Jap Japan, and China, performing at such venues as Carnegie Hall, Kennedy Center, and Copenhagen's Tivoli Concert Hall. Fukasawa has won many accolades and international prizes, including rave reviews in Strad and Fanfare magazines, and the best chamber music recording of the year from the Danish Music Awards. In 2012, Ms. Fukasawa was added to the distinguished roster of international Steinway artists. Uh, Fukasawa is the pianist for the soundtrack of recently released film, We Had to Go, Remembering Inter um, Internment, and the three compact discs, including a live solo CD here in Prague, one of the violinists, where uh, one violinist, uh, Igor Veligan, titled Voices from Eastern Europe, and another with bassoonist, Scott Poole, titled Vocal Vocalese, uh, were released in 2013. Ms. Fukasawa serves on the artist faculty of the Talis Festival and Academy in Sarsfi, Switzerland, and Orfeo Music Festival in the Italian Alps. She has taught at California State University, Sacramento, St. Mary's College of Moraga, and the University of the Pacific. She also enjoys nurturing young talent in her own private studio where her students are winners of state, national, and international competitions. Uh, she studied chamber music intensively as the member of the Jalina Trio with Ferenc Radosh in Budapest and violist Tim uh, Freder Freder Frederiksen in Copenhagen. She studied at the Czech Republic's Prague Academy of Music as a Fulbright Scholarship recipient and received a Performer Certificate degree she also earned her degree from the New York Juilliard School and University of Maryland. Ms. Fukasawa has recorded for the Classico and, and the Capo labels, and her career is noted in the world, world of women in classical music world and who is who in America. Professor Fukasawa, over to you. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me today. It's a great honor to be here. Um, I am uh, talking to you from Stockton, California, where University of the Pacific Conservatory of Music is located. 
Stockton is about um, an hour from the state capital, Sacramento. And so we're in Northern California. And we have three of the piano majors here with us today sharing their um, their music that they're studying this semester. We have, I don't know if you can see, Matthew, Matthew Hui, and Joseph Cruz in the middle, and Jun Li uh, in the pink sweater. So you will be hearing their music a little bit later on. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about University of the Pacific first, um, because it's a very special school uh, being the oldest university in California. It was founded in 1851, uh, just a year after California was uh, has become the state of the United States. And so it's, it's a beautiful campus. So I invite you to all come visit if you're in this area to enjoy the beauty of the campus. Um, we are um, Conservatory of Music and the Conservatory of Music currently has about 260 students studying in all um, different majors, uh, including, of course, performance majors and composition majors. But we also have um, jazz studies, history studies, um, management, uh, focus on management, as well as music therapy and music education. So it's quite diverse. and. All of the students um, have the opportunity to take applied private lessons uh, with their major instruments. And this is the way to encourage students to become better musicians, whether they're going to become a performer or not. Uh, it, it teaches them to become an excellent musician in the field that they're going to pursue. So that is about the University of the Pacific. Uh, and then today I wanted to talk, um, share with you the music they're studying. We have two late works uh, by Brahms and Beethoven. And then we have a music by Fanny Mendelssohn, not Felix, but Fanny Mendelssohn uh, to share with you. And how I wanted to do it was um, maybe talk a little bit about the music first and then um, have the, each performer play their music, share with you. And then I'll ask them maybe a few questions, or maybe if, if any of you had any questions, feel free to ask them. So the first piece is today um, is by Beethoven, Beethoven's um, number 30th sonata for the piano. So, of course, Beethoven wrote 32 sonatas, and the last three are considered to be sort of the triptych uh, and almost a, a Bible for, for pianists. And um, this is a, a beautiful uh, third movement from the Opus 109 uh, in E major, and June will be playing that today. Um, I wanted to share screen and show you how special this music is on the paper. Um, let's see, let's see, desktop. So, so this, this last movement is in variation form. Of course, Beethoven, as he got older, uh, he became more and more bold in exploring new structure uh, instead of uh, the most common rondo form. He has abandoned that and he puts this not fast, not loud last movement as an exit, but this most poetic, beautiful um, theme and variation. And at the beginning of the theme, he writes in German, um, instead of in the most common music language, Italian, in late in his life, he often used the German to express something much deeper uh, from his heart. And so it says Gesangvoll, it means full of song, songful. And with um, Empfindung, it's a very special word. Um, it's 
and in Easter, innermost deep feeling. And in, in Italian, it's, it's translated as andante, molto cantabile ed espressivo, which of course it's, it's close, but by saying this, the innermost feeling, it's, it really is, he's telling us pianists, this is something not so common. And in the beginning, he says mezza voce, which is not cantabile. Cantabile is singing. Mezza voce is translated directly as half voice. And my understanding is that this is a, a vocal technique where the, the voice is more tender and loving and caressing rather than fully open, expressive sound. And so this is how he begins this theme. Um, and as he evolves, it's, it's a variation form, but not like the more common variation where it's a mere uh, ornamentation of the theme. It's rather a transformation of the theme and I will have June play each variation, just, just an excerpt first, so you can hear how it, it changes um, gradually. Second variation, oh, sorry, I, I meant to say first variation. <laughs> Let me see if I can get that. First variation is a much more open sounding aria-like with an accompaniment that is dance-like. Uh, and then the second variation is quite interesting in the way it looks. Legermente, which means lightly. And if you look at the, the, the right hand, the treble clef and the bass, bass clef, the way it's, it's almost like pointillistic music. Uh, and then he goes to this beautiful teneramente's melody. Teneramente means tenderly. And then he goes back to that light texture again. And he does this uh, one more time in the second half of the second variation. And then very different third variation, which is uh, quite alive. And it's interesting, he, he writes here, Allegro Vivace, simply. And it's imitative in, in both left hand and right hand. And then in variation four, I, this is where I feel like he starts to transform, transcend the theme to something else. Uh, somewhat slower, etwas langsamer uh, than, than the theme. Piacevole means pleasingly. And this texture is so special. It's, it's four part. Uh, freely, freely imitative. Um, this is where the, the, the music really starts to change. Uh, and then variation five is interesting. It's, it's counterpuntal. It's almost fugal. Again, it's uh, four part, very strong music. And then this goes into the last variation uh, variation six, which starts simply, and then with the time signature change, he starts to employ more and more um, subdivided uh, inner voices, 16th notes, and then it's becoming 32nd note, and this turns into an eventual trill, the trill, the long chain trill, which Beethoven was so famous for. Earlier in his life, when he was um, famous for his virtuoso piano playing, this was one of the thing that really made him very special and stand out from the rest. When he had a contest with various pianists in town in, of Vienna uh, of improvisation, Everybody commented on how special his trills were, chain trills, and they, they couldn't match it at all. So 
this is the last variation, and then the variation uh, concludes with the return of the theme. Now, of course, oh, you can see a little bit of the end of the variation where um, June will be trailing for a long time, and it comes to a beautiful close. And then instead of mezzo voce, it's cantabile at the end. And the theme is now transformed. Um, so I'm going to have June come to the piano now, and she can play a little bit of the each variation, and then she will play through for you this third movement from Opus 109 of Beethoven. Yeah, just just okay. play the theme. She'll okay. play the theme for you now. Just just few few bars. Yeah. Very simple. And then the first variation. Almost Italian. Yeah, it was a very expressive and embellished singing. And then the second variation. That's right. Good. And then comes the third variation, which is the imitative one, right? I like Ravivace one. Yeah. Very playful and gutsy. Yeah. And then it transforms to the variation four, the Pietrovole variation. It's almost like he's a different composer. <laughs> Suddenly, right? Yeah, such a different style. And then he goes to this imitative fugetta variation. Yeah. Good, yeah, very strong. And then he goes to the last variation, which starts almost like the theme, right? Right. And that is the one that goes into the chain trill that Beethoven is famous for. Right. So now we'll have Jun Lee perform for us this variation.
Thank you.
Thank you so much. Wow, that was beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it's just, you know, somebody said one time, I think Beethoven wrote for humanity. And when I hear music like that, it really yeah. makes me think that that is really true. Um, June is, are you a senior? I'm a senior. And she's playing her senior recital in about a month and 10 days or yes. so, right? Yeah. Uh, and of course, she'll be programming this. Um, would you like to share what your plans are once you graduate? Sure. Um, so nothing is really set right now, but my plan is to take a gap year and apply to grad school in the winter. And then during that uh, break of time, I'm planning on maybe exploring, traveling if I can, and also um, I'm planning on applying to collaborative piano programs, um, so I will look into those kind of music, like rap, and just learn more music. Well, you're yes. playing some chamber music right now, pretty serious stuff, like the Brahms Quintet, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you're, you're also involved in that genre. And so, well, thank you so much for sharing that beautiful performance thank today. You. Yeah, thank you for being here. So um, now the next music I like to share um, with you is um, music that Matthew is playing. He will be playing the Brahms Intermezzo Opus 117, number one. So these 117, 118, 119, all these are the last set of music Brahms wrote for the piano. Um, he, this particular set, all three pieces are uh, intermezzis. Um, and, but really they are cradle songs. In fact, he said, Brahm said himself, these are the cradle song, a lullaby of my sorrows. And the number one um, comes with a, a little quote in the music that I like to share with you. Uh, let's see if I can do this again. Um, now we're in Brahms. So here in German, it says, uh, so I don't mess up, I'm gonna uh, refer to my notes here. Um, sleep my love. My child, lie still and sleep. It grieves me to see you weep. And it's it's a curious quotation. And um, in the Henley edition, it says it's from the Herder's uh, Volk, Volk's lead, uh, the folk songs. And so um, Brahms really enjoyed collecting old manuscript and books and there's a very famous picture of him in his you know iconic black beard uh, long beard and black jacket and black pants sitting in front of his um, library just like uh, Larissa's background full of books and manuscripts you can see this in a, an excellent biography by Jan Swafford on Brahms, the Brahms biography. I really recommend that. It's so vividly written. Um, and so he probably found this um, book. It was published in the 1700s. And um, if I could diverge a little bit about this poetry, because it's really interesting, and I don't really think Brahms could have known the full details of, of the song. But this song is anonymously written about this Lady Anne Boswell. Um, she's called the Scottish Lady, and she was actually a, a Norwegian a lady from a, 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 a very wealthy class. And she was seduced by a man by the name of Earl Boswell and married him. And while they were in the Netherlands, 
he asked for more money from her family and then one day just took all the money and disappeared and abandoned her and her child and later on this this man is quite an awful man i think because he ends up marrying the queen of scotland but he is suspected of killing so the queen of scotland mary this is her third husband and the last husband and he is suspected of killing the second husband and so when they actually marry it becomes uh, the country of scotland becomes quite divided and he ends up fleeing to norway of all places and when he lands in norway um in bergen i think and uh the queen the the lady anne she is from near norway uh bergen and she files a complaint against uh, Earl Boswell, and he's captured, and he's imprisoned in Denmark for the rest of his life um, in a town called Oshers, which is in the Shelland uh, island of Denmark, wh where Copenhagen is. It's in the northwest part of um, Shelland Island. I, I just thought it was this so interesting, this terrible story of this man and this lady, poor lady. Uh, and so this lady's lament, it, it's in five stanzas. And the, the what you just saw at the beginning of the Brahms is just a first two lines refrain that keeps coming back. But the, the rest of the po song is about his, her um, lament about how Earl, this man who um, abandoned her, his his life, a, her imagination of him being wounded in the war, and uh, it's it's quite dark. And I don't really know why he would Brahms would quote this, uh, except maybe it, it gave an inspiration um, for this piece. It starts out in E flat major. Uh, and it's in six what, eight, which is a very swaying kind of lilting meter. And then it goes into the minor, E flat minor. Um, I'm sure that's where he's referring to the, the weeping part. And then when he comes back in the last section, I wanted to share that again. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Uh, Brahms does this, the return of the theme, of course, is, is embellished in a way, uh, right here in the second line, the, the inner line embellishment is almost more beautiful than the theme, you know, that's typical of Brahms writing, it's, it's so beautiful, and it's so perfect. So, here it is. I'm going to stop sharing so you can hear Matthew. Matthew, who we play for us this intermezzo, Opus 117, number one.
Thank you, Matthew, for that beautiful performance. Yeah, that's great. So Matthew is an international student. He is from Hong Kong originally, and he is graduating next semester with the Bachelor of Arts in Music. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. Um, so what is your plan after graduation? Um, what is your aspiration? I would try to find some jobs in here or maybe go to Canada. Oh, go to Canada. Yeah. Do you have some relatives in Canada? Uh, yeah. Yeah, good. So you're, you're going to be looking for a job as, as a musician. What kind of job are you going to be looking for? Um, I think it's, I'm, I'm still exploring, so uh -huh. yeah. I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, best wishes to you on that. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Future. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. So last but not least, we have an unusual music um, by Fanny Mendelssohn today. Um, and then it's going to be shared by Joseph Cruz. Um, Fanny Mendelssohn was the oldest child of the Mendelssohn family. Felix was number two. Uh, and she received um, very high education in music just the same quality and she was so talented but because of the time she lived in she was and because of the class she she's from the very wealthy class and so she was not allowed to have uh, music as her profession um, and she was discouraged from her teenage years by her father and also by felix not to pursue her music as a career but she continued to play and compose throughout her life. Um, she had her own salon um, once she married. Uh, and so she had much music uh, written, over 400 music was written during her lifetime. And some of it we know today that uh, the Felix Mendelssohn uh, published it on his behalf with his name on it and um, there is a, a story that um, Mendelssohn Felix Mendelssohn was visiting Queen Victoria and F Queen Victoria sang her favorite song by Mendelssohn to honor him and F Felix Mendelssohn said well you know that song actually was written by my sister Fanny uh, it was not my creation so um, she was very talented. And this idea of songs without words, it's a very famous collection of music by Felix Mendelssohn. Um, who knows where, you know, was it his creation only or was it shared inspiration? Because they were very close as brothers and sisters, always sharing musical ideas first with each other before any publication or any public performance. And so when her music was finally published um, after long pursuits by by different publishers she she made sure that felix knew that she wasn't the one pursuing this this i was asked to do this over and over again by her friends and her publishers uh, but she was quite inspired when she saw her music in print um, at age of 40, this was when her music was first published. Um, and the first opus, um, let's see, opus one through four was published during her lifetime. Um, but unfortunately, she died of a stroke at age 41, just a year after her music was first published. It's really tragic. Uh, and then, of course, Felix, heartbroken, uh, dies just half a year after uh, Fanny's death. Um, and this piece that um, Joseph is going to share with you is Opus 8, uh, which was published after, long after, both Fanny and Felix were gone. And I wanted to show you this, the way it's printed, because... 
it's really striking to me when I first uh, learned about this piece through Joseph. Joseph introduced me to this piece. It's called Songs for the Piano, Opus 8. There's just barely anything on this score. It's just notes. It almost looks like music of Bach. Uh, not much slurs or f no, no details. And I think it might be because this was posthumous publication. Not even Felix could have done anything. So it's a beautiful piece, um, Songs Without Words. Songs for the piano, and sometimes it's called Songs Without Words um, by Fanny Mendelssohn. So, Joseph, would you mind coming up here and sharing your music today? sitting here for a long time. <laughs> Do you want me to turn for you? Yeah.
I just love that piece because, and especially it's so poignantly, so tragic in the beginning. And then when it turns to B major, it just gets me every time. It's so beautiful. And Joseph brought this music, introduced me to Fanny Mendelssohn's, this particular piece of music. How did you come across this music? Well, uh, we had a guest artist here last semester, um, or two semesters ago. Uh -huh. And she was talking about Claire Schumann and Fanny Mendelssohn. And I heard Fanny Mendelssohn's B minor piano sonata. And I, I just kind of fell in love with her music. And Dr. Leong brought this to me, and I was like, wow. yeah, Do I love it. Dr. Leong is the other piano professor here at the University of the Pacific. And uh, Joseph and June both studies with me and uh, Dr. Leong. So yeah, that's, that's such an amazing piece. So thank you for sharing. It's so beautiful. And it's quite different from Mendelssohn, yeah. Felix Mendelssohn, yeah. in the sensibility. Um, Joseph, you are a double major, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is your other major? Um, physics. Physics major and <laughs> piano performance major. So, um, what what is your plan? What is your aspiration? What are you? Um, well, after after next year, I'll complete the other degree, and my goal is to apply to grad school for piano performance next winter. Uh huh. What and about physics? Are you going to pursue physics further? Uh, I'm considering it. Yeah, I think I, I'd like to see where music takes me first, and uh -huh. see what happens after. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Joseph. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you so much for being here. That concludes our uh, music sharing with you all from the University of the Pacific Conservatory of Music. Thank you so much, Natsuki, and so much. Thank you so much, all the wonderful performance for sharing your music today and for the enlightening stories. <laughs> um, so yes, thank you, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, we hope to see you before too long. We hope so too. Stay healthy and take care. You too. Bye bye. I just wanted to say how honored we are to have had Professor Fugasawa join our program today and for sharing the knowledge and art. We hope you will join us for our next session, which will be March 13th, tomorrow, uh, Sunday, and that will be a faculty panel on performance anxiety. And we will also have a violin masterclass on Thursday, March 17th with Professor Rosa Korumovic. And on March 20th, which is a Sunday, there will be a violin masterclass with Sarah Crocker von Stato. Before we conclude, I would like to introduce those of you who might have missed the new dates for the summer's edition of the Orfeo Music Festival, an international classical music event and one of a kind opportunity for ambitious classical music student performers to travel to Italy in July to train with world-class faculty performers, participate in their master classes, perform internationally and gain recognition in concerts, go on trips and musical tours of historical locations, and make new musical friendships and international network of professional connections. This year, Orfeo Festival will feature the festival program in Vivi Piano, Italy from July 4th to July 16th. The event is suitable not only for student and educator performers, but also others with strong interest or professional involvement in the music and arts. You can, you can register for the event through March 15th or by March 1st for the early bird registration rate. We would like to thank our sponsors as well that include Orfeo Music Festival Foundation, Mayor Vipitano Peter Volger, Department of Culture, City Council, and Department of Tourism of Vipitano, Italy. If anyone here has questions, we encourage you to reach out to us directly or by visiting our website at www.orfeomusicfestival.com. We thank you all again for attending today, and we look forward to speaking with you again soon or seeing you at the festival.